Welcome back again. So the goal this time is officially to talk about how you make logic circuits, which is like ands, ors, and nots uh, with PicoSoft and Ladder Logic. But to be honest, it's mainly just to get you some more practice with PicoSoft. Like you've been introduced to the tool, uh, now we want to do a couple more things. So let's just go ahead and uh, we've got a circuit on the uh, on the notes here. Uh, let's just go ahead and build this thing together. So go ahead and fire up PicoSoft again. You've probably got something open from uh, from your last uh, video. That's fine. Uh, just go ahead and say File New. Um, if it asks you if you want to save your old one, you can save it. Save it wherever you like. Doesn't matter to me. Um, and we're going to make a new file. So I kind of like to uh, just kind of start things from scratch again. It's really easy. You just drag over the type of uh, PLC we're using. First one. That step is the same every time, right? And then we're going to go over to the circuit diagram. We're going to get some practice building uh, some circuits. So what we want to do is we want to have one of them uh, be an AND of I1 and I2. Uh, you'll notice that when you drag over an I, it gets I1 by default. If you want to change it, you just highlight it. And then I'm going to switch this to I2. And then I want those to control Q1. All right, so that's fine. I'll say that if you had made a mistake, that's fine. Uh, this is a graphical programming language. You can erase things, you know, if you make a mistake. Uh, you've also got a pencil tool, and you can draw things in. Um, if you uh, need to put something back, that's fine. Just drop it over the top. Um, it's a pretty easy language to write in. So that was one of the things we wanted. Uh, so I1, I2. We also want to make a OR gate. So this OR gate is going to be um, I1 or I2 control Q2. If you want rid of the pencil, you can just click on it again. That will get rid of the pencil. And I wanted to change this to a I2. Cool. Uh, by the way, you can also zoom in and out. If you need more, more screen real estate, uh, you can do that. Uh, just kind of whatever you, whatever you need to do. All right, so this circuit um, is almost done. As soon as I change that to Q2, that's done. So what we wanted to do an example of here is a simple OR and a simple AND. Uh, the way this works is uh, really PicoSoft, you can think of it as, as the water analogy. Like this rail always has, has power, it always has water pressure, right? Um, and it tries to squirt out um, everywhere it can go. Um, and then it hits these gates. So these inputs are like gates that decide to let power through or not. Um, these gates allow power to come through whenever that input is made. So this circuit doesn't care if it's a normally open which is pressed or if it's a normally closed which is unpressed. It doesn't care. It just cares about the state. Um, and if the state is made, uh, then water will flow through. So if I1 is made, it will go right through there. Um, if I2 is made, it will go right through here. Um, and this power, um, if it reaches this, this one's called a contactor. If it reaches this contactor, uh, then this guy is on, um, and so that's how that works. If I2 was shut, you know, if I2 was, uh, was currently in a broken state, no power would come through there. Uh, with the OR gate, you can see that if power comes through here, uh, then this thing is on. But if it's shut, um, then that's okay, because if power is on here, um, you know, you can sneak power through there. So it's a pretty easy way to visualize an OR gate. Once you've got your schematic ready to go, so you've got your circuit diagram done, you can skip over to the simulation tab. The simulation tab has to match the real world, which we talked about last time. Um, for this one, there kind of is no real world. So what I typically do when there is no real world, um, I make them all momentary, normally open, which is the second column. That's kind of the easiest column for me to visualize. So I just made all eight of them um, open, um, the bottom eight don't matter because they don't exist. Uh, just for giggles, I'm going to make them all, all normally open momentaries. Uh, once you've got your switches set up to the right types to match the real world, uh, you can click on play. Uh, and then you can see, like, as I press these things, they actually change color in the diagram, which is cool. So here if I press uh, I1, um, you can see that uh, it lights up in places, and you can see that Q2 is coming on. If I press I2, um, the other one will come on. Note that I can't get this top rung to work if I make them both momentary. So I'm going to just cheat, right? I'm just going to make them uh, both positions. Um, 
and then that will behave very differently in the simulator. So now if I wanted to, I can click this guy, um, and he's on and stays on. If I click him again, he'll turn back off. Um, and if I click both of them, I1 and then I2, uh, then you can see that the whole thing turns on. And as we discussed previously, you kind of have to look for the fire um, in the switch here. Another way you could do it is you could open up a display area. The display, you can watch the inputs. So you can see how the inputs are behaving. You could also watch the outputs. Um, later we'll be watching things like markers, but we won't worry about that just yet. So the display is another nice way to see things. And that's really useful once your, once your code gets big, right? And you can't see everything on the screen at the same time. All right, so that's kind of our basic uh, and and or. Let's go ahead and flip back to the slides. Um, another thing that you should uh, learn about, and now is kind of an easy time to learn about it, are timing charts. So timing charts, the way they work is it's a visual representation um, of the inputs and outputs um, with time as the x-axis, right? So this is this is time. Um, going this way. Um, typically you draw broken on the bottom uh, and then made on the top. So go ahead and take a minute, see if, if using this I1 and this I2 timing charts, see if you can fill out what Q1 and Q2 would be. So the top would be like, you know, when it's made and then the bottom would be when it's broken and turned off. See if you can do those. Alright, I'm gonna do them as well. Uh, so this one, uh, I'll do Q1 first. Uh, Q1 is an AND, so it needs to only be on when they're both on. Uh, kind of hard for me to draw on the screen, uh, but I think you saw the, the key times for this guy uh, were when they were both on. And then uh, I, or sorry, Q2 is an OR, so it is on whenever either of them are on. Uh, so the or kind of looks like that. Um, and to be perfectly honest, timing charts are just a good way to make sure you understand things. Um, and so we use them in exams a lot, right? So this is just kind of what this timing chart looks like. Good to practice with easy circuits so that when we get to more complex circuits, uh, you could still do those as well. Also, I want to mention it. Sometimes when we draw these timing charts, we'll put grid lines on here. Um, the grid lines are just to make it easier for us to grade, right? The grid lines are not meaningful in any other way like these transitions they happen you know instantly right it's like people always ask like do you have to wait till the next grid box those are just to make it easier for me to grade all right so following along with what we're doing um, and or and then the last logic gate is not we need to learn how to do a not the way you do a not is basically you just change the input so I'm gonna go back to my my circuit diagram here um, so I'm going to have an I3, uh, so this is I3, and I'm going to switch the input type. There's actually two types of inputs. Uh, there are inputs that allow um, like the power to flow through when it's made, which is every one we've used so far, and then there are ones that allow it to flow through when it's broken. So you just switch it to say it's a brake switch. Um, you can see that the, uh, the style changed uh, to kind of show this bar across. Um, and then we'll have it control a couple of cues as well. The other thing I wanted to show you is that uh, you can actually do um, branching on the output side as well. So if I go ahead and switch that, uh, I'm going to change these to a Q3 uh, and then a Q4. Um, and somehow this became I5. I meant for that to be I3. By the way, I love that it limits you to the correct number of eyes here but then in other places that our code wasn't smart enough to limit only eight eyes, no big deal. Um, and like I said, if you wanted to zoom out, you could, uh, but that might be hard to see on the video. So I'm going to keep it zoomed in just on the new stuff. So this works just like you think it does, right? Um, so if there's power over here, there's a gate. Um, it only lets the current flow through uh, when it's whenever that uh, input is in the broken state. So it's just a it's just a flip, right? So it's a knot. Uh, once power comes through here, uh, it hits I3. It also is free to, to branch down. You can visually see how that would work. Uh, and then both of these come on whenever he's broken. So let's go try it out. Uh, so in our simulation, 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make I3 a you know most basic type. I'm going to leave it as a momentary. So as soon as I do this, um, as soon as I hit play, you'll notice a couple things happen. One, it remembered the states of I1 and I2. I find that annoying. I wish it would reset them to like their default type. Um, I3, you can see it's broken right now. So you can see it's broken. Um, and because it's broken, they're on. Um, if I press it, uh, then they turn off. And instead of viewing the I's, you could also view the Q's, right? So right now I've got, oh shoot, I called that one. I meant to call that four. Let me go fix that. I've actually made a very common error. Um, what the heck, I'll stop and talk about this error. Um, so you can see right here, I've got a contactor here controlling I1 and a contactor here controlling I1. I mean, that's a disaster, right? So there's two different people telling I1 exactly, or sorry, Q1 exactly what to do. Um, that, is a, that is just a, a coding error, right? I wish that PicoSoft would, would mark it with a red exclamation point and said, you've just done something ridiculous. Um, because you should only have one thing controlling um, an output. If you ever have a contactor in this row, that's the only thing that, that can be in that row. Um, later we'll talk about sets and resets, uh, which are different. All right, tragedy avoided. Uh, so now we've got uh, these guys, and I can see that their outputs are on until I press uh, I1. Once I press it, it becomes made, um, no current, and then it's back on. Watching me do things is fun, uh, but now it's your turn. So what I would like for you to do, um, well, there's a timing chart for this as well. This timing chart is really easy. It's just an inverse of whatever I3 is doing. I guess it's good practice. So make sure in your notes you can fill out that timing chart, but they're just the inverse of whatever I3 is. Um, and they three and four just flow together, right? Whew, you can check yourself off. You understand makes and breaks. Let's do one on your own. Let's see what you got. Ah, always another slide. Uh, the thing I wanted to mention in this slide is that I wanted you to notice how PicoSoft is working. You've actually got three columns that serve as your inputs. So you can put inputs, you know, in these three spots. If you want more inputs than that, you have to do some clever thing with multiple rungs. Um, and then this last column is very different. It's an output column. Things will appear differently depending on which column they're in. And then these, these three middles, they're just for wiring, right? So that you can do things like ups and downs. Uh, but you get three gates, uh, also called inputs, and one output on each rung. That's how this particular PLC works. Fancier PLCs has, have more features. All right, so now it's your turn. Uh, see if you could make this circuit. Actually, let's just make this a separate video. Uh, it'll it'll be better decoupled. Um, so that's it for this time. Answer a couple questions about ANSORs and not, and then we'll come back and we'll do this practice problem, and it'll be the only thing in the last chunk. See you then.